With Star Trek Picard only two weeks away, we've got our final look at the final season of Picard. This was from the AFC Championship game. From the new captain of the USS Titan A to the Star Trek Next Generation reunion we've all been looking forward to. There is definitely a lot to break down in this trailer. We've got all the details for you in this Star Trek trailer breakdown. If you want to watch the trailer, as I know it's region locked in some places and we can't show it to you fully here due to copyright, I know, head over to the link in the description to watch the video. Then come back here and watch this video and see what those juicy details meant for the upcoming third and final season of Star Trek Picard. As a heads up, we'll be ripping apart this trailer and discussing it in full detail. Naturally, these will be spoils for the upcoming episodes. You have been warned. Always. Engage. Welcome to Trek Central. I'm your host, Captain Jack. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We've got tons of Star Trek Picard content coming up that will get you prepared for the upcoming third season. Oh, if we miss something, then make sure to mention it. We'll feature you in a video coming up on the channel, so get ready. Okay? Engage. To introduce not only the brand new final trailer, but also the Admiral to the ship, we are first greeted by a Starfleet officer using a bosun whistle. This is as Starfleet as an enabled tradition to welcome people to the ship, especially Picard and Riker who walk onto the ship. And this is the same whistle model seen in the Undiscovered Country and Picard Season 2. As seen in previous trailers, our duo are greeted by Commander Seven, who, if you remember, was given a field commission to captain at the end of the last season for the USS Stargazer. It seems Starfleet has somewhat honoured that, giving her a full commission as first officer aboard the USS Titan A. Starfleet officers line the corridor, as you would expect, greeting legends like Picard and Riker. He wasn't a blink and you'll miss it scene in the previous trailer, still, we finally get a good look at the captain of the USS Titan A, a character played by Todd Stashwick, who's previously played a Romulan infiltrator in Star Trek Enterprise. But in Picard, he's playing Captain Liam Shaw, who gives us a very Jellico 2.0 feel to his introduction here, almost criticising events which happened under Picard's watch. He does say, you'll find this inspection boring, by saying that things won't be blown up or destroyed. So first off, this does have some interesting aspects. Captain Shaw and our Admiral Captain Duo are having a nice meal. We have seen pictures by Terry Metalis, previously of some fine Starfleet China for their meal. Also, referring to the motive there being as an inspection may be a false motive, as it could be there they pretending to do an inspection, but actually hoping to get the ship to go rescue Beverly Crusher. It is possible. With now a name to the face of a captain of a Titan, this character may have some Starfleet history. The only other Starfleet officer we know of with the surname of Shaw is Lieutenant Ariel Shaw from the original series episode, Court Martial. Could they be related to each other? It would be a nice reference there, but for now, we don't know. While Captain Shaw is giving his little speech, we see some cool and interesting things. Fire. Unexpectedly. Riker is seen with a phaser firing at a very human looking figure, who I can only see as having yellow shoulder pads. This could be a Starfleet officer rather than one of Vadek's goons. It could even be Law, who we do see with such an outfit later in the trailer. We see Picard with a phaser as well, firing on the bridge of a starship, probably the Titan. We do see the SS Ilios in one of these little scenes, the ship Dr. Crusher uses for her Doctors Without Borders system. Now it's crashing into the USS Titan. I assume this is some sort of trap, as we've seen these ships be boarded in previous trailers and this trailer. So perhaps when the Titan arrives to find the ship, the enemy is used to deal damage to the actual Titan. We hear Worf say there is something coming. What this could be is going to be a big plot point of the season. How Worf might know could illuminate what this threat might be. A recent tweet by Terry, the showrunner of the third season, is Worf never really got over the Dominion War. So could this be a threat be related to the Dominion War? Who knows? In a shot that continually makes us here at Trek Central just a door, that is the USS Enterprise F as an Odyssey class from Star Trek Online. We did a recent breakdown of the ship, so if you're not familiar with the Odyssey class, check that out. Previously, we've only seen the Odyssey class, but now we get an extended shot of this scene, and it's joined by 12 other starships. These ships include the Sovereign class, Sagan class, and a tuna cell version of a Sagan class starship. I think this might be the Echelon class, but I'm unsure. I'm curious why they chose just these three class of ships when we know they have a lot to choose from from Picard Season 2, but I guess we might see why in the series and it might make sense. Now they are moving across a planet, but which planet this could be we don't know right now. Perhaps this is a planet where the Starfleet installations get attacked, which we have seen in previous trailers. Worf continues saying some kind of attack and Starfleet could be the target. So why is Starfleet the target and it's being referred to as Vengeance? 
We're going to have a couple more weeks of theorizing before we actually find out. So there's a lot to look forward to. Again, we see the Essos Elios being raided by ships which look like they are largely ships from Star Trek Online, but orange instead of green. It has been hinted at by the creators on the show that they could be Alachi ships, but that doesn't mean those inside are the Alachi, just using other species technology. Alachi, Alachi, however you want to pronounce that. I do wonder if these ships do belong to Vadix forces, considering we know she has that cool looking Shrike ship. We also hear again a familiar drawing line by now, from these trailers, there's a darkness and all-consuming darkness, which will be great when we finally get to hear the context in why Troy is saying this. We do see later in the trailer the Essos Elias warping away with one of these ships attached to it. So either people boarded the Elias, just abandoned their original ship and took the Elias with it, or maybe the Elias and the crew of Crusher managed to get away, with only a couple of enemies boarding. Perhaps Crusher gets injured and put into cryostasis until they can get her to a place with better medical resources. Now, one of the new additions to this trailer, which we have not seen before, is the addition of Ed Spielers, who is playing an unknown character. And Trek Central actually broke this news back earlier last year, around July, I think. You can check out articles down below. We also broke news of Todd Stashwick as well. So, uh, yeah, sorry about that, everybody. We, we didn't mean to spoil it, but we didn't spoil it, but we broke the casting news. So that's pretty cool. Now, Ed's card is described as a new series regular who aids Beverly Crush's medical efforts and world Starfleet has forgotten. And this character has not had his name revealed yet, so there's a possibility it could be a spoiler. It could even be something like Crusher and maybe a char between Beverly and Picard. We've all been theorizing about this, they could have just told us, but I expect it'll be a better surprise in the show. In this trailer, he is first seen pointing a gun at Riker, as Riker and Picard are on a ship, possibly the Essos Elios, for missing Crusher's presence. But with the timing of the Elachi ship's boarding, who knows how this plays out. We do know, however, that Crusher's cryopod is on the bridge, somewhat, which we've seen previously. And it looks like this set is a bridge with a view screen, visible, and some consoles and live support. And also the L cars in the background show this. Later in the trailer, we actually hear Ed's character speaking, talking to Picard and saying, is anybody you know still the person you knew? And I think fans will have to take this little quote to heart. Our characters have grown and changed since their next generation days and even Star Trek Nemesis. Some may not be in a position you remember or even like to begin with. Worf prefers pacifism now, and Jordy looks to be angry at Picard. A lot has gone on. There is a shot of Ed next to an MSD of a ship, but doesn't really look like any of the ships we've seen previously. The nacelles appear to be above and below, like the Kelvin or Challenger class, and he seems to be holding a photon grenade or something like that, so maybe the team are doing boarding. Cut to a very packed industrial planet with many shuttles above it, and we go to Raffi, who we've previously seen in this seedy underbelly of a Star Trek galaxy. So this probably means Orion Syndicate plants or something else, we'll wait and see. We do know Raffi now has control of the Las Arena, and has passed down from Rios to Seven between Season 1 and Season 2, now Seven to Raffi from Season 2 to Season 3. Raffi's always been looking for the conspiracy, only to a daze from being a Starfleet intelligence officer and being vindicated for being right about the Romulan plot surrounding the attack on Mars, and subsequent synth ban. But it does seem like she has also gone back to some of her old habits, perhaps, with her spraying something into her eye which may be drug related. Okay, okay, okay. We know the season starts with Crusher sending an encrypted message with a password to Picard and his old Next Generation Enterprise D com badge. We see some of its contents of Crusher saying, Jean Luc, trust no one. And we can see she is on the Essos Elios, and it seems to me coordinates have been enclosed, but the message is encrypted. Now, this trust no one is interesting, as it does suggest some sort of conspiracy within Starfleet as well. Why shouldn't Picard trust people and why? How far does this go? Anybody else flashing back to the Next Generation episode Conspiracy? Because I am, and yeah, we already crossed that theory, but oh well. Later on, we do see Crusher with a phaser rifle, and from some recent comments, we'll be getting some cool action scenes with Dr. Crusher, which is awesome and looks like she's holding off Vadic's goons, as seen in the trailer. And speaking of Vadic, again we see the beautiful Shrike cutting through his gaseous air of space in such a menacing way. This is such a cool design of a ship, and I look forward to learning more about it. Also, our main villain in the series, Vadik, played by the great Amanda Plummer. She knows Picard and his name, so probably has some sort of history with him, though again, we don't know what history could be. We will have vengeance, she says, as we see the Shrike attacking the Titan in this gaseous orange area space. It looks basically like hell. Why does she want vengeance? Perhaps considering Crusher being all about going to help out planets that Starfleet forgot, could Vadik be from one of these? Maybe the Romulan relocation mission? We see that our foes are able to somewhat easily gain access to Starfleet systems, easily unlocking airlocks so they can board the ship. The goons of Vadic get a proper good look in this trailer, with a close-up of their face and mass, though it could really be either. 
I would say this mask looks like there's something resembling pipes at the bottom of the mask. But knowing things like the Borg, which could be just integrated into the bone-like face, who knows. If they are masks, these goons could be another species from the other planets that Starfleet simply forgot, which could add to their need for vengeance. We've been guessing what species these guys are for some time now, from species such as the Solologian from the next generation of Star Trek Online, Solagian, Solagian? Also the Gem Hadar from Deep Space Nine, who knows at this point, what's your theory? You and I have travelled to the far reaches of space, but something is different now. This is the end, my friend. Is a line delivered so excellently by Riker and also makes me worry for both Picard and Riker's safety in this final season. Anything could happen and no one is safe and that scares me. With the words, the final voyage begins, really selling that this is the final adventure of our next generation crew and Picard, there is a shot of a Titan going to a new starbase. Now this isn't the big grand starbase we saw in previous trailers, but a smaller one which has multiple docking rings around its structure. Perhaps a ship repairs or something like that. The station orbits this massive blue planet, but we have no idea which planet this could be, so no idea where this station is located. It turns out Geordi seems to be in command of his starbase as Commodore Geordi LaForge. And he kind of looks pissed at Jean-Luc. I hope they tie in some of Geordi's feelings from the time media around Picard, mostly being brought in to help Picard create his Romulan relocation fleet and then suffering survivor's guilt after Utopia Planitia was destroyed. Later in the trailer, Picard says to Geordi, this is life or death, with Geordi replying with, it's always life or death for Jean-Luc, when has it not been? Now he's probably resentful towards Picard. Now that he has children of his own, he probably doesn't really want to be involved with any of Picard's antics because it might put them and himself in danger. A scene which I cannot place in this trailer, which is a good thing I think, is Riker, Picard and Worf in this weird room. There is a circular location with some weird equipment. Perhaps this could be where Moriarty is stored, and they summon him here, stored after the Enterprise D was destroyed and they needed a place to put his little hollow matrix box. The area lights up as our trio approaches. This tech doesn't look Starfleet, so what could it be? I say this could be Moriarty's area, as Moriarty is seen in the very next scene saying, such pathetic old warriors, to probably our trio. Apart from being locked in a simulation for decades, I do wonder why he speaks with such disgust in his voice. But maybe this is just disgust at the aging of the people who once bested him. With them explaining why Q looked older in season 2, in a really nice way, I wonder if he'll do the same with Moriarty. Perhaps his partner, the Countess, and he had aging subroutines in the Hollow programs and he could grow old together but eventually realised that this was all simulated. How this is edited, it looks like Worf is mostly hit by these pathetic old warriors, and we see him on the planet of Raffi fighting for us some reason. Michael Dorn, who reprises roles as Worf, said that he loved working alongside Michelle Hurd, who plays Raffi. So we'll get seemingly those two paired up for a bunch of scenes, which will be cool. Now, it was a beautiful shot of the US Titan 8 at war, with a phaser burned hull, and I have to say, this ship is massively growing on me. At first, I was intrigued by its older Enterprise refit looking design. With its 25th century looks to it, while keeping that older design, it's a beautiful ship. The Titan encounters some sort of blue explosion, which is probably some technical battle way to get out of a certain situation. As we do see officers aboard the bridge, relieved that it worked. One of the bridge officers, an ops officer, is Halion, with science also being a bold Vulcan. Another new ship, which we have not seen previously, can be seen in this trailer, as your standard Starfleet ship configuration. The ship was also created by Bill Krauss, who made the Radiant class USS Stargazer, as well as the new Constitution 3 class USS Titan A. The Titan A came from one of Bill Krauss's previous ship classes, the Shangri-La class. Shangri-La class. It is possible this ship could be as well, being a 25th version of the Central class, that seems most likely. Anyway, we see one of its nacelles being blown up and losing power. The card of the Titan are there to witness it, perhaps being too late to save the ship from being attacked. At least better render assistance. There is an amazing voice line by Vadic over this, saying, For each ticking moment, I'll take another piece of you. It's not easy to make out, but over this line is a Starfleet officer being pushed against a force field by one of Vadic's goons. I think the intention of this is that this character is one of Geordi LaForge's daughters. With the next scene, we see Geordi and his other daughter, played by his actual daughter Mika Burton, looking shocked at something. His daughters are called Alandra and Sydney with Sydney looking to be the helmsman of his Titan A, and Alandra maybe taking more in her father's footsteps, donning the gold engineering officer uniform. Talking of daughters, Raffi's looking wishfully at a picture of a young girl. Perhaps this is just Raffi wishing things were different, considering she already basically lost her son due to the Zart Vash conspiracy. Finally, we get a few good shots of Brent Spiner as Law. In the first scene, he appears to be sat down in a room at one of the starships. However, Dr. Crusher and Jean-Luc are talking to him. 
Later, he can be seen talking to someone else, saying, it's human nature, pal. Battle stations time. Captain Shaw can be heard once again shouting battle stations. Apparently are getting a manager of that line. This is followed by some quick fire shots. Commander 7 can be seen running down the corridors of a Titan with Starfleet officers around her. There is another quick scene of Deanna Troy in here. Now she's become in a more open room than before. There is another scene that follows this hallway scene about a Seven in a turbo lift. I think we can hear Captain Shaw shouting close it as in the door to the lift. Interestingly, there is also a shot of Ed Speeder's character now in a Starfleet uniform shooting another Starfleet officer. He appears to be held back by another, so perhaps this is a weird security situation going on. For a moment, I think this could be something to do with lore. There's also quick shots of the Titan A running up to high speed, with Picard giving orders to gun it. And the crew being thrown at corridors, it's rather hectic. Now we see the old Enterprise D crew sitting around the table, as Picard asks for their help. Honestly, this scene alone is fantastic. The conference room really takes you back to the old days of the Enterprise. Ultimately, the trailer ends with Jean-Luc giving his signature, Engage. Now in the captain's chair of the starship. The captain's chair looks different than the normal one we see on the Titan. So perhaps a scene change, or it's just a different angle. Who knows? The final scene is of Picard and Riker in a shuttlecraft discussing old times. I really like this scene, so here it is. Are you enjoying this? Of course not. Are you? Okay, that was the trailer. Star Trek Picard Scenes 3 not only promised to be a great outing for our next generation crew, but also a good send off of them as well. There have been recent comments about doing more Picard or just cameos with these characters. But for now, it seems like this will be the end of the story for now. All good things. However, stick around and subscribe to the channel as we'll be breaking down every episode as they come out with reviews, lore, videos, ship breakdowns, and much more. We've got it all here. You don't want to miss this season. Critics and journalists are already raving about Star Trek Picard Season 3. Press screeners of unreleased episodes have been sent out. Therefore, several influencers and press members have taken to social media to share their excitement. Sadly, for the rest of us, we've now got less than 30 days until the third season airs. Guess we'll start counting. The details around Star Trek Picard Season 3, the cast and trailer all sound fantastic and I'm super excited. On a quick note, Sandy January 29th brought tragic news. Annie Wershing, who portrayed the Boar Queen, sadly passed away at the age of 45. Star Trek fans will remember her for taking on the mantle of a Boar Queen in Picard Season 2. However, she ultimately made her Star Trek and television debut in Star Trek Enterprise's first season episode, Oasis. A husband of three sons survivor, additionally a GoFundMe has been set up to support her family and you can find links in our article down below. Star Trek Picard Season 3 will debut on February 16th, 2023 on Paramount Plus in the United States and on CTV Sci-Fi Channel and Crave in Canada. However, the series will also be available on Amazon Prime's video service for most international locations in the following days. For coverage of Star Trek Picard Season 3, make sure to follow Trek Central. So, what do you think of the trailer? Oh, if we miss something, then make sure to mention it. We'll feature you in a video coming up on the channel, and you know we love making videos. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. For now, I've been Captain Jack. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you very soon with Picard Season 3. Live long across, my friends. Goodbye.